What's up, YouTube? This is Two Raw Four TV. So before I get into this video, I want to give a big shout out to the brother Aram with the eight dollar donation via the PayPal. These are notes saying your top ten small Ford series is extremely enjoyable. I wanted to know where you had guys like Alex English, Adrian Dantley, Lou Hudson, Kiki, and one of my favorite collegiate players of all time, Grant Hill. I have him above worthy, but definitely top 15. Looking forward to the top one through four. Um, I'm going to tell you something. Some, I, I sometimes wrestle with whether I should put Grant Hill like at number 10. But the problem I have with Grant Hill is that a lot of his resume is aided by his great collegiate career. Which I'm not. I don't take into account with NBA. I just look at professional, whether it's ABA or NBA. I don't really take into account college, because you know college falls under basketball. Nate Smith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. So all of that goes into the pot. Uh, so with Grant Hill, I have him like top fifteen ish. You know, Kiki's not in my top fifteen. I'll be honest with you, Kiki skilled, but I I don't really have him in my top 15. I really don't even quantify where I would put him. Um, Alex English, Adrian Dantley, they're probably top 12, top 13-ish. Uh, Lou Hudson, maybe top 20. That That's pretty much how I would have that. I have to really look at it and look at each player uh, that I can think of and, and, you know, try to measure it. But anyway, top one through four should be coming this week. So look out for that. And much respect to you for showing love once again. So I'm going to put a link to this article in the pinned comment in the comment section below. And Stefan Marbury, who's never been one to shy away from how he feels about people, has given effusive praise to Kyrie Irving and sees him as a true leader and someone that his son could look up to as a role model. This is what Stephon Marbury had to say. Quote, I love the man he's becoming. He's a true leader and someone I want my son to look towards as a man, a leader and basketball player. He's not down with the program cycle to make bread. But in return, he's trying to share bread to the hungry with knowledge and truth and who we are as black people. He's not perfect, but he's trying. His heart is filled with nothing but love. He's seeking truth. He's not on wax talking about how much weight he sold to his own people or about how he wants to kill others. Sadly, the elderly and the so-called greats are not free. And to be free is to have space on earth. He's teaching a new generation how to live in mind, body, and soul. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm taken by when he says, sadly, the elderly and the so-called greats are not free. And you can't help but know what he's talking about. He's talking about a lot of the people that are actually literally being paid to shit on Kyrie Irving in this situation. Um, yeah, I agree 100% with I agree 100% with Stephon Marbury, man. You know, Kyrie Irving for the most part means well. And, uh, you know, this is a guy that's intellectually curious. I can relate to that. Uh, always trying to find the answers to questions. Inquisitive. But people like that. I'm just going to be honest, man. I'm not sugarcoating it. When you are a white person or any other race for the most part, and you are intellectually curious, um seeking answers, wanting to know truths, 
these things are encouraged. But when you are black and you have these same tra uh, traits, the system or people see you as a threat. They, they want us to be dumbed down. And whenever there's been a time period where there's been an awakening of us or signs of awakening, they shut that shit down immediately. You know, during the, the years that the Cosby Show, I was talking about this all the time, the years when the Cosby Show and A Different World were on, do you know that black college uh, enrollment rates skyrocketed? Did you know that uh, graduation rates among black kids went up? Then you would think that that'd be something praised. But the powers that be don't want that because we are supposed to be societal, uh, in this society. We are supposed to be by design at the bottom of the totem pole. And what did you start seeing? You started seeing our culture become more obsessed with criminality and violence. As I said before, there was rumored to have been 30 years ago a meeting between those who are leaders of the music industry and those who were leaders of the prison industrial complex. And there was an unholy alliance made where uh, those who are in control of the music industry purposely put out music, pur pur uh, purposely chose artists who rapped about violence, rapped about killing each other, rapped about uh, self-genocide on wax uh, as a means to uh, normalize criminality and to encourage criminality within the African-American community, in particular with men. But now it's the point where it's even being indoctrinated with black women. Why do they do this? Well, because these same people who are in control of the music industry often have shares and have been longtime investors in prisons, which are now privately owned and open uh, to others as far as stock is concerned and the larger a prison is and the more uh, the bigger the prisons are the more people are in the prisons the more money these guys get and make off these prisons literally hundreds of millions of dollars have been made off of being an investor in uh, prisons in this country and some of your favorite rappers who you guys love to bump their music and you know some of the people who own uh, not owned, but uh, run these uh, you know, music companies, these guys have stock in prisons. The same prisons where your Uncle Tukey has been for fucking decades. And they're, and they're making money off of that shit. Off of what is essentially legal slavery. So anyway, <clears throat> hope I didn't veer way too far right or whatever and go ahead and talk about something else in this video, but yeah, um, we're in a new a new day, man. And they don't want that. They don't want a guy like Kyrie Irving to be admired or to even listen to his side of the story. Whenever he talks, they want to demonize him. And you, you're never going to see anybody say, well, wait a minute. Well, why don't we just listen to what he has to say? Maybe he has a point. You're never going to hear that. You're always going to hear... Oh, what he's saying is just uh, despicable and anti-Semitic, 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 to the point where you're just like, well, well, what exactly does that mean? Well, you don't have to worry about that. It's just, we're telling you it's anti-Semitic. Anyway, tell me what you guys think.